God of creation There at the start Before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark And fleshed out the wonder of life As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form. And if the stars were made to worship so loud, I can see. Die. 
And as you speak A hundred billion fairies disappear Well, you lost your life so I can find it
put the mic on.
to lose I feel unqualified for what you're calling me to Alone with your strength I've got no excuse Cause broken people are exactly who you use So give me faith Goodbye to my chains When I said hello to your perfect love I turned my head from my shame When I looked upon the face of love Giving me a reason, giving life a meaning Giving out hope, that's what you do All I ever needed, all I ever wanted All I ever needed, all I ever wanted 
the D I B L E. Come on, that's the book for me. I stand up on the word of God, the B I B L E. Oh, the B I B L E. That's the book for me. I stand up on the word of God, the B I B L E. Come on, sing loud. The B I B L E. That's the book for me. I stand up on the word of God, the B I B L E. Good. 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 Come on. Jesus loves me. best to uh, get this together and it's like I told sister Betty I said all afternoon this afternoon Delano will be singing Jesus loves me at home so
They keep it handy on me, so we got it. This is a great song, Brother James uh, introduced us to this song here a couple weeks ago. And the words are going to be on the screen. So please, every, I know it's a men's ministry song, yeah. but it's a great song for us all to sing. So if you guys will sing with us and we'll enjoy the song.
years later. Come on. Come on. Isn't this a wonderful group of ladies? <laughs> well, God has blessed us. Have you ever been so afraid that it took your breath? Have you ever had that type of fear before that you just couldn't hardly breathe and you couldn't hardly take a step? You know, that's from Satan. That has nothing to do with God, and Satan is a liar, and he's a father of it. And as we've practiced this song many, many times for the past two months, God has so richly blessed us, even in our practice. We have felt the Holy Spirit, haven't we, ladies, as we practice it. I want you to listen to the words of this song. Fear is a liar. Amen. It comes from the pits of hell. So worship with us now and listen to the words.
fantastic. It's so good to have everyone here. I know time is getting away. We, we plan to have an Easter egg hunt after the message. But I've asked to have the message right after fear is a liar. You know, we as Christians sometimes, uh, we're afraid to step out and take authority. When Adam and Eve were created, they had dominion over everything. We as Christians, we have the authority through Christ Jesus to be all-powerful. The first uh, verse today is found in Matthew. The title is More Access. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection. Not before, but after his resurrection. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Can you imagine people might say, well, you know, Jesus uh, really didn't raise from the grave. They stole his body. You know, they paid soldiers to spread that story. And God in his infinite wisdom knew People were going to try to deny that Jesus rose from the dead. And the word says, And many and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection. The world needs to see today people who were dead in sin. And serving Jesus. I, I talked to a person here just this morning. And they were saying about how they were when they were in sin. But you know what? Now is a different story. We have become that new creature in Christ Jesus. Hebrew tells, oh, excuse me, the curtain that was ripped was a three-piece garment, a, a curtain. One piece went this way, one piece went this way, and the other piece went like this, and they were sewn together, which made it very hard to tear. And the Bible records it was torn from top to bottom. In other words, no one got it at the bottom and, and tried to rip it. it. It ripped from the top to the bottom. In Hebrews now, the 10th chapter, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he had consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. His flesh opened up. You know, in the veil, the holiest of holies, the high priest only entered one time a year. And if you know your Bible history, they sewed little bells around the garments. Uh, he, the high priest sacrificed for his sins first, and then sacrificed for the sins of the nation of Israel. And Mary has said if they went in and the high priest didn't really consecrate himself, he would fall dead. And then people sort of looked around and said, well, who's going to go in and get him? So you know what they did? They tied a rope around his ankle. And as long as he moved, those bells were jingling. If the bell stopped and didn't start again, they'd just pull on the rope and pull out a dead high priest. What would happen today if we want to gain access and the Lord said, this is going to be the holiest of holies here today. If you have not repented of your sins and living like you're supposed to live, death could come upon us. Sobering thought. You know what the last plague in Egypt was? The death angel. The death angel. And that was the only plague that affected the Israelites in the land of Goshen. I've heard people say, well, it would be a long time before the church can ever be perfected, his body. Well, you know, the death angel can take very good care of that. Old time preacher one time said, that he was asked, how's your church doing? Is it perfected yet? He said, no, I'm only three deaths of the way. Meaning of three people. Anyways, going on with other verses now. If you've got to explain it, it doesn't help, okay? <laughs> Hebrews 4.16 said, Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. We have access and don't do it. Boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Is anybody here in a time of need? Do you believe in the beginning? And the end's okay, but it's what's in the middle. It's tough. 
We need to gain access to find that grace and help of time of need. Romans 8, 15 and 17. For we have not received the spirit of the bondage again to fear. Fear is a liar. If nothing else, you should have learned today that fear is a liar. But we have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And of children than heirs, heirs of God. And listen to this, and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we shall also be glorified together. Uh, I made a brief note here. Uh, you know, when uh, what he has, we have because we're joint heirs. Now, if you have a family of three and the parents pass away and everything's done properly, then hopefully every child gets a third. Well, if we have 70 people and the parents pass away, you only get one seventieth. That's the earthly way. But you know how it is with God, if we're joint heirs? God is a God of more than enough. Amen? There's no limits on his blessings. We can gain access if we come boldly before the throne, be adopted, and become joint heirs with Christ. Romans 8 and 32 now. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us how many things? All things. We have access to everything that he has. God loved Jesus and God loves us. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth how? Liberally. And he upbraideth not. I heard a story one time, and it may not have been true, but it had a very good point. A ship was sailing from Europe to America. It was about a two-week cruise. And they noticed every day a man was sitting on the deck of the ship in one of the lounge chairs wrapped up in a blanket, eating cheese and crackers every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, the day that the ship was finally going to pull into port, Brother Kenny, somebody went to him and said, Sir... We've noticed that all you're eating is cheese and crackers. Uh, are you seasick? You know, crackers will help settle your stomach. He said, oh, no. After I paid the price for the voyage, I didn't have any money left for food. And they looked at him and said, sir, you didn't realize. Food came with the cost of the ticket. He had access to everything that was being prepared. If you've ever gone on a cruise, your meals are paid for. You just sit down and you pull out the thing. Uh, when we went on our cruise, uh, I was blessed to be a chaplain on one of the cruises there. And we sat with a guy that would order sometimes two complete meals. It was free. But you know what I did when uh, I, I ordered calamari? Squid. I ordered snails. Escargot. Why? Because it was free, and I was going to give it a try. Well, you know, sometimes we are afraid to reach out in faith and do things that we've never done before, and he has freely given us all things. On Wednesday nights, now this Wednesday night we have business conference, we won't have it, but we've been studying the gifts of the Spirit. We have access through the Spirit working through us, and we need to let God work in a very special way. Don't settle for just cheese and crackers in your spiritual life. Don't say, boy, I barely made it by the skin of my teeth to be saved yet today. The Bible said, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. I know whom I have believed in and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. As I was studying for this, I said, Lord, the greatest Easter message we could ever have is at the end. Someone give their heart and soul to Christ. Repent of their sins and accept Jesus as their personal Savior. Over in John now, the 17th chapter, verse 23. I and them, this is Jesus speaking. These are the red letters, okay? I and them and thou and me that they may be perfect in one. That the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. If you think that God doesn't love you, this verse calls fear a liar. He says that thou hast loved them 
as thou hast loved me. Do you believe that God loved Jesus? I mean with all his fiber, with all his being. And he loves us the same way. We need to gain, gain access to that confidence. You know, uh, I, Sarah may not like this, but you know, she used to cry when she had to do anything. If, those of you that were in Field you remember? She would come out of the little side office and, you know, that'd be it. Okay? But after a while, she, she got confidence and could sing, and she sings beautifully. Her little girl, I noticed she didn't cry. And when she was back there just a while ago, you know what she was doing? Jesus loves me, this I know. You know? So we have to gain access and believe that God will use us no matter where we are and who we are. Next slide, please. John 10 and 2. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Look round about us here today. What a, what a nice crowd. We, Sister Gail, you had a nice Sunday school crowd too. And I thought, Lord, help us that every seat in this sanctuary would be filled. And Lord, we want to see people come in who know you as their personal Savior. But we also want people to come in who don't know who you are. Really, who you are. I serve a risen Savior. He's not dead. He's alive. He promised me life and more abundance. You talk about access. He's given me access to healing. He's given me access to his amazing grace. He's given me access to confidence. You may find this hard to believe, but when I was a child in school and it came time for an oral book report, I took an automatic F. I wouldn't stand before people. I was so shy. What happened to you? Got saved, sanctified, got filled with the Holy Ghost. God placed a calling in my life. It makes a difference. Amen? It makes a difference. But be ye laborers, and the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Every one of you, I don't want to challenge you. The Word wants to challenge you. Gain access to that desire to be a worker for Christ. When I saw these children up here singing and doing different things, uh, the skit or the play, the songs that they did were, uh, see, it was Daniel, Moses, and David. Okay, and each one, every time that song got to their part, you notice what the kids were doing. Jesus will shine the spotlight on you sometimes at the most inconvenient time. The three Hebrew children were not only in the spotlight, they were in the fire. But boy, they maintained their integrity. They had access to the very Son of God, walked in the fire, hair wasn't singed, smoke wasn't on their clothing. I'm here to tell you today, if you have access to Him, He will keep you and preserve you through this horrible world. Today, I heard at the sunrise service, and Michael verified it for me because I didn't hear it on TV. Three churches were bombed this morning. And where was that? Sri Lanka. Three churches were bombed and, and over 200 people killed. I, you know, what would happen if in America if all of a sudden the neighboring church got bombed? Would it make you want to stay home? You know, in the early church, they grew by leaps and bounds. They went underground. And when they went underground, God went with them. Lord, help us to gain access to your throne and be found faithful. My last verse is in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. You ladies did outstanding with that song. And I just felt impressed to end the service with this scripture. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. If you want to access what God has for you today, you cannot have fear. Fear is a liar. Be the best you can be. We talk about grandma. I can remember uh, Grandma Sedwick, my dad's mother. Uh, you could go to her house unannounced and something was either just going in the oven or something was just coming out. That's how they did it. They baked their own bread, and they baked desserts and, and all these things. And she was a pastor's wife, and Brother Tom, she knew she had to prepare for sometimes just, you never knew who was coming through these doors. 
Well, you never know who's coming through these doors this morning. Brother Curtis, if you'll come to the piano, please. It's about four minutes till, but I want to give us a chance to have access to the throne of grace. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, it's free. Now, there's a cost to maintain salvation, but he died that I and you, all of us, might have life and have it more abundantly. All we have to do is accept him as our personal Savior, but before that, we need to repent of our sins. You don't need to name them one by one. The only thing you need to count one by one are your many blessings and see what God has done to have access. I'd like to have a stand. I thank God for this Easter program. The children did great. Uh, women, the men, we thank you for all you've done. But have you felt his spirit touching you this morning through a song, through the word, through something that was done here today? If you're here and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, we're not promised a tomorrow. Have you ever seen store hours posted? I picked up a cake for Delana's birthday party this afternoon at our house. I said, I'll pick it up at 12 o'clock. Got there around 12. They had a sign. We closed at 3. I could go there at 3.30 and guess what would happen? I wouldn't get the cake. But if you're here right now and the Lord is touching your heart, you can gain access to the throne of God. He is here. And it is because He lives. Let's sing this course. If you're here this morning or you just need to gain access to more of His Spirit, open your heart 